So what else can I learn about transformations from the matrix action? Well, I can ask how transformations change objects, in particular linear and affine subspaces, lines and planes. Say there is a rotation in R2 and I have some line in R2. The rotation will move the line, it will put it somewhere else, I will get a new line. This is the transformation acting on the line, sending it somewhere. In general, say I have, a, I have a transformation M represented by a matrix that goes from Rn to Rm. Say I have an affine or linear subspace L in the domain Rn. What does M do to L? Well, since the transformation is linear, it will send L to some other linear or affine subspace, some other line, plane, three space, or whatever. This is called the image of L under the transformation the place that L gets sent to by M. I want to be able to calculate the image, to know how a transformation except, ex affects some particular line or plane or higher dimensional subspace. If I think of M acting on the whole domain and all of our N, I also have an image. This is the same as the notion of range for functions in calculus, all possible outputs of the function. The range might be not be all of the target space, it might be a subset. For linear transformations, the word range is not used. Instead, this image of everything, this set of all outputs, is confusingly called the image of the transformation itself. And this is pretty confusing terminology, so let me try to clarify. For a subspace, the image of the subspace under the transformation is where it is sent. The word image applies to a subspace, the image of L under M. However, for the range for all outputs, this is called the image of M itself, the image of the transformation. The word image applies to a different kind of thing here, which is pretty inconsistent. However, the terminology is standard, so I feel bound to stick with it regardless. I said that matrices act on subspaces. Subspaces are described, I, described either as spans or loci. Let me start with spans. Again, I have a transformation M from Rn to Rm. The action is linear. All the functions in this course are linear functions. Linear means that addition and scalar multiplication are preserved. So what happens if I act on some vector that is expressed as a linear combination? M acting on some a1v1 plus a2v2 and on to akvk. Well, this is linear, so I can do the addition first or after the transformation, and likewise the scalar multiplication. The result is the same linear combination of action on each individual vector, a1 times m acting on v1 plus a2 times m acting on v2 plus so on to ak times m acting on vk. Each piece of this is where the transformation m sends each individual vector v. Now think about a span. A span is some number of vectors is all linear combinations of those vectors. If a matrix acts on a linear combination, it produces the same linear combination of the matrix acting on the individual vectors. So the output is still a linear combination just in the new vectors. This means that all linear combinations of the vectors V must be sent to linear combinations of the new vectors, the M acting on V vectors. Therefore, figuring out where spans goes is actually pretty easy. I just apply the matrix to each vector in the span and get a new span. The image of the span is the span of mv1, mv2, and so on to mvk. What if the span is offset? Well, an offset vector is just adding another vector and the action of m is still linear. Therefore, there will just be a new offset and the new offset will just be the matrix applied to the old offset. For an offset span, the matrix sends it to a new offset span, calculated by just applying the matrix to all of the individual vectors that describe the offset span. All right, what about transformations of loci? Is there another algorithm as nice as this? Well, loci are described by equations instead of vectors like spans, and it turns out that equations don't transform nicely. 
there is no way I can just apply the matrix to the equation and get new equations for the image of the locus. So, unfortunately, there isn't a direct method here. In fact, the only method is just to use spans. A locus can be written as an offset span. These are both affine subspaces, a locus and an offset span are two ways to describe the same thing. I understand the image of offset spans well, so to find the image of a locus under a transformation, I have to do the hard work to write it as an offset span and then apply the matrix to that offset span. And there's just no way around this.